Hello, hello. Thanks a lot, Tay, for choosing Starbucks this morning. What can I get you started with? So I am smack dab in the middle of my marathon training block. Less than four weeks away from the McCurdy Marathon in New York. And being less than four weeks away means that I need to be training my hardest right now. As many of you guys know, a big part of running fast is the amount of miles you are running each week. And for those of you who don't know, I'm training to run under two hours and 18 minutes in the marathon. Now I wanna start this video off by saying that mileage is an extremely personal thing and it varies from person to person. Yes, I'm trying to run 110 miles this week, but it's taken me years to get up to this point. And even then I'm being extremely careful while doing it. So in this video, I'm hoping to show you guys how I break up my mileage, what a training week looks like for me, and maybe give you guys some advice along the way on how to increase your own mileage safely. All right, guys, it is Monday, day one. We are trying to get 110 miles this week. We're calling it peak week. This will be the highest mileage week and highest intensity week of the build so far. The goal for today is to have my longer run be anywhere from 12 to 15 miles, and then my shorter run probably be around four miles today. Anyways, I do work eight hours today, and I did sleep in, which means I'm gonna have to do my shorter run right now, and then my longer run in the afternoon, so goal for right now is about four or so miles, depending on how I feel. Okay, um, just finished four miles. It was a little colder out there than I expected. So I felt a little bit more tired than I expected. So we are starting the 110 mile week strong with four easy miles this morning. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Thursday morning. This morning we got a hill workout. Um, mileage goal for today is 16 miles total, so hopefully I'll at least get 10 this morning and then I'll be able to come back for a six mile double this afternoon. guys it is six in the morning on Saturday it is workout day uh, big workout today so we are up early we're drinking water and we are getting some coffee to start off the morning hello hello thanks a lot Tay, for choosing Starbucks this morning what can I get you started with yeah could I get a um, blonde Americano thank you lovely 556 at the window thank you all right guys, I got a couple hours until the workout. So usually I'll spend this time watching YouTube or playing video games. I only allow myself one round of video games in the morning just cause I'll get too sucked in and I'll play for hours and I'll forget about the workout and I won't do the things I need to do. Getting a victory royale first thing in the morning I think is the best way to uh, go into a workout. So I'll show you guys what I do. We are in a top three situation. Oh. What are we doing today? All right, well, first of all, we're starting 30 minutes late because Adam forgot his shoes and had to go back home and get them. So <laughs> don't do that. Uh, we just did a little three mile warm up, and now we're gonna do 12 miles at marathon effort. So up here, in Flagstaff, it's safe to say on Lake Mary Road, you should probably run five to seven seconds slower than goal pace at sea level. So we'll see what that is today for Adam, but it's a perfect morning, just rained, and it's no wind yet. So hopefully it stays that way. Alright 
guys, we just finished the workout. It actually went pretty good. Um, started off the first like six miles just sitting at 520 pace, which honestly really matched the effort of marathon pace, I thought. So I was comfortable with sitting it there and I felt really controlled until about mile nine. And then after mile nine, I started pushing it a little bit. I ended up averaging 517 for 12 miles, which is pretty good. And that's a big confidence booster, especially for the workout being up here at 7,000 feet altitude. I mean, the plan no matter what is to go into that marathon running 218 flat pace and then uh, feel, hopefully feeling good from there and getting after it after 20. So we'll see how that goes, but this was a big confidence booster. I only really have one more really hard workout and then uh, after that I just start the taper. I think we're at 92 miles for the week, so I'm gonna double later today and then I'll go tomorrow and that should put me at 110, um, which will be my highest mileage week ever. So super excited about the work I put in so far this week. And now honestly, it's just time to recover. All right, guys, it is Sunday afternoon. We are going for the last run of the week that will put me at 110. Feeling a little tired today, so we'll play it by ear. But um, today is a special day because someone just got in from Flagstaff. <laughs> oh, God. That's not, that's not making it in the video, sweetheart. I'm going to tell you that right now. All right, guys, so since I didn't get really any footage of me running through this week because I'm a loser, and I have nobody else to film me, and I don't like to be running around with a camera all over the place. Mika's here now. It's the last day of the week, Mika's here. I'm just gonna give you guys a tour of the runs that I do here. There's not very many, but I'm just gonna show you guys the runs I do here. Our first stop on the Flagstaff tour, honestly isn't anything special to Flagstaff, but it's something that's near and dear to my heart, and that's grass loops. So a part of any high mileage diet, a healthy high mileage diet is grass loops. Back at BYU, every morning run would be a grass loop. I'd do five to five to six miles every morning on grass. So I don't know, there's something about being able to turn your brain off and just run. Okay, welcome to stop two. Time to run. This place is, it's not really a hidden gem. It's probably like one of the most basic runs in Flagstaff, but it's only a quarter mile away from where I'm living at the moment. So it's a perfect place for running. I'm gonna be honest. This is basically the whole tour. This is like 90% of the runs I do here. Um, that's mostly just because I'm a convenience kind of guy. Now that Mika's here, we'll be doing some more of the iconic runs. <laughs> Now that Mika's here, we'll be doing more of the iconic runs. Right here, I'm gonna put up how many miles I ran on the Urban Trail this week. It's right here. That's how much, that's a lot. I'm assuming it's a lot, because I did like 90%. Anytime I'm not working out or running with someone, I'm on here, so. All right, guys, thanks for coming to the tour of Flagstaff. I'm gonna finish the rest of my run. And yeah, that's it, thanks for coming. <laughs> So we did it guys, 110 miles this week, and honestly, I'm not feeling too bad. My biggest advice for anyone who is looking to increase their mileage is to listen to your body. It's okay to be tired. In fact, that's what you're going for. You are trying to make yourself tired to make your body adapt. But if you're feeling extremely tired for days on end and not recovering for days or even weeks, then something might need to change. Everyone wants to run higher mileage to run faster, but not everybody wants to do more recovery along with that mileage. As I said before, mileage is like a balancing act. You want to balance recovery, the mileage you're doing, and you also want to balance your workouts as well and maximizing those and making sure you are still having really quality workouts. Another tip that I have for people trying to increase our mileage or run higher mileage in general is having multiple pairs of shoes. Right now in my rotation, I have four pairs of shoes, but I would say bare minimum, you need two to switch off with. The thing for me is I always make sure I'm trying to hit soft surface, whether it's grass, turf, or dirt. Adding soft surface into your weekly mileage is major key, especially when trying to stay healthy and avoiding stress injuries. And my last tip when trying to increase your mileage or run higher mileage is to remember that mileage is just a number. It's the consistent training and stacking healthy seasons on healthy seasons that really help breakthroughs and help your body become stronger. So again, don't put yourself in a hole trying to run some arbitrary number that you set at the beginning of the summer. We are doing a Q&A in the next couple of videos, so if you have any more questions on mileage or anything like that, drop it in the comments down below. We are less than three weeks away from my OTQ attempt. We have one more hard week. Be sure to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you guys for watching.